Welcome to Off and Be episode 5. It is 4 in the fucking morning and I am tired, in case you can't tell. <sighs> Just your typical day, you know? And the more I look at myself, I look like a lesbian off Mean Girls. Um, this outfit is not fetch at all, as the young bullying whores would say. You know, that movie really does not age well in terms of not creepiness, in terms of teenagers that look like 28-year-olds and doing things teenagers shouldn't really be doing to that extreme, but... Like I said, welcome to episode 5 of Off and Beat. So we'll just uh, get to the good stuff as you would say. What do you call a person with herpes who's overly emotional? What do you call a person with herpes who's overly emotional? Probably someone who's Maybe a little irrational. Mm. <sighs> this is what Mark Twain envisioned when he was talking about the Nobel Peace Prize Award or the Fistler Award for clever, witty writing and jokes and lovable emotion within one's being. But then again, back in his day, you know, you were also probably fucking your sister. And you were probably doing a lot of incest and you were probably committing sexual battery and it was just considered a work day. Man, have the times changed. But as times have changed, you know what hasn't? Rude ass bitches that work at those retirement homes. They have the biggest sense of entitlement and edge and just a sense of anyone from the outside that comes into this bubble where they basically happy Gilmore. If you watch the movie, you get the reference where Ben Stiller, that character basically uses and verbally manipulates these old ass people in these homes. To me, when you really think about it, it's probably one of the biggest scams we have in America, maybe the world. Not sure how it works in other countries, these retirement homes. I'm pretty sure they keep it in the family where if someone's dying, Probably got an actual family member that takes care of them. We don't just stick them into a nicer motel and have random strangers feed them banana pudding with vanilla wafers and then they probably forget that they're supposed to eat it since they have dementia or Alzheimer's or CTE. And they think it's like some hemorrhoid cream and they use the banana pudding and they probably use it for their rashy ass buttholes from shitting on themselves all the time. They probably mix the banana pudding, the rice pudding. Probably like mix it together like, probably feels like sand and coconut oil together. They just mix it together, spread it again between the seams, you know? And then we call that assistance to the elderly. And while these people that live here, they're going to pass away very soon. Living in these homes, they're going to pass away very soon. You know what we decide to do when someone's going to pass away anyways? Like, you know what? For the six months you're going to live here, let's just drop $12,000 for you to live and have rude-ass people treat you like you are absolutely about to die. 
God basically looks at these retirement homes like layaway. He's like, look, I've already invested in your death a little bit. I've already given you some crippling injuries. I've already made it hard for you to walk. I've already taken your way, your will to live. You can't even exercise. You don't even have the memory to remember your family's birthdays or your own or your wife's name or the one you cheated on her with. You forgot to even say which other one didn't make it. You forgot your own abortion. You forgot it all. God has taken your ability to even remember the life you live. He has taken away your ability to move. He has taken away your ability to be with other people. He has taken your ability to be who he put you on this earth to be. He is, no pun intended, cutting you off by the limbs. He's making your bones hurt. He's making it hurt to sit. Making you have atrophy in your legs from laying down too long. He's giving you blood clots. He's giving you bad blood thinners. And you know what we're like? Yeah, instead of being common sense, hey, there's a lot of variables working against you. You know what we do? We just throw money at them. We just throw money. Here, magically, get rid of my foul bro, my algae. Get rid of it. No. No. It's not what we do. Insurance will cover it. Will it? Doesn't really. Oh, my 401k will cover my social security. Will it? It doesn't. But the worst part is God has put you on layaway. He's put a down payment on your death. He has put a down payment on your passing. He's just waiting to, eh, I have time today. I'm going to actually just buy it. I'm going to pay more than I bought you for. Than I could have bought up front. Could have just bought your death up front. But no, let it drag out of it. Make you feel like you had your last days. Make you reminisce on the past. When you lay in your bed, watching Judge Judy, making 40 mil a year, when she could cover the whole residency, she could cover all your bills. But no, she's worrying, listening to people baker back and forth about, is that my kid? Well, it has to be your kid. Otherwise, you're the only one I've slept with. Are you, we will find out today up to 23 years if you are the father. Does it really matter at that point? If it's been, you're 23 years old, and you don't know who your father is. One, you have a lot of questions to ask your mom. Two, it doesn't really fucking matter at that point. You want an excuse for why you have no future Outlooks in your life. Hmm. I'm 23 years old. Let me blame the fact. I don't know who my father is The only thing your father probably could have done is to not watch Shitty television and maybe tell you to get a hobby. So maybe it does matter But these rude ass people that work at these retirement homes I can't even explain it. You either know or you don't. But it's all a Ponzi scheme, these retirement homes. You're just delaying the inevitable. You're just giving money away because these people want to make you feel special. Oh yeah, have your family come over. Meet you in this deathbed. Put some balloons, you could decorate the room how you want. You know where else you could decorate what you want? When you're in fucking heaven. When God tells you the world is as you see. And you realize after 73 years on this earth and you go up to heaven. 
you could have saw the world how you want it, but you wait till heaven and you look down and you know what your biggest regret in life is going to be? Staying in that fucking retirement home. But, who am I? Retirement homes are, aren't a scam. Just because you have shitty family members that really don't want to do anything for you even though you did everything for them through your 70 plus years of existence. It was like, you know what? Thanks for everything. We're just going to throw you in a fucking strange home. Who knows? You may get improperly touched. Maybe you could get the, maybe you could get the deal with Sean Watson suite. Get some nice massages. Feel young again. Thrust the air. Gyrate it. But what do I know? Just a young man with a great future. And I like massages. Even when I'm 70 something. Because, like a Walmart layaway, I could use the typical happy ending pundit, but I'm not. You know what I am gonna use though? You are just kind of laying away in your life. Anyways, to the poem. This beautiful one we have today. It's called, Just Love Me. Just Love Me. How hard is it? I want you to need me. I need you to want me. Something has been breezing the air like the Bahamas when you're puffing. I need you to love me. My way of thinking has been fumbling, waiting for me to drop the ball. So I go to my safety valve. Girl, you're so lovely. I don't know what I see, but I know when I see surfing your current waves just so you wave back at me. There's a buzz on my phone. You instinctively take a peek and see my tag pose of a sneaky pic of you sitting across from me. Wearing your leather jacket with your blonde hair curly like an Arby's fry. You gleaming in your cheeky cheeks, waiting for heart emojis and oh my gods to fill your comment lines. I utter, sorry, I know you needed more attention. The way she's waiting for a friend's dimension. Ooh, you lucky girl, he a keeper. Your connection is so much deeper. She's not an attention seeker. She deserves to be highlighted because she's the definition of someone who loves you but doesn't need you. Which makes me want her more. I guess you could call me a dreamer. Because dreams do come true. I'm laying my eyes on the Pharaoh as we speak. If the calendar ended in 2012, this date would have never been placed because the weight of the universe would have been too much to bear like the world's strongest man more plates more dates the only plates i be clearing is the ones i be eating on my dates so i'm fat in case you didn't get the reference I love big girls. That's a personality trait. How hard is it to love me? Well, that's episode five of Off and Beat. I'll just leave you with a caveat of the line. Love your wall. The same way your legs fill when you're doing wall sits.